A large percentage of Iran's leadership puts no hope in modern-day politics. Their hope is focused on a person who walked the earth centuries ago and is promised to return in a short time. He is the 12th Imam, son of the 11th Imam al-Hassan al-Askari. Iran carried out an unparalleled attack on Israel on April the 13th and the 14th, not by proxies, but by the Iranian military. Might their Shiite eschatology have something to do with their bad behavior? Shiism, which is the Iranian brand of Islam, is fixated on the reappearance of the 12th Imam. When the 12th Imam comes out of hiding, he will bring great changes to the world. He will remove evil and injustice. Iran's leading clerics believe they will have supernatural help in removing Jews from the region known as from the river to the sea. In December 2022, CBN featured a report titled, Twelfth Imam, Key Facet of Islamic Prophecy, Fuels Middle East Turmoil. Close quotes. Ray Tillman, director of the School of Intercultural Studies at Golden Gate Seminary, believes that no one can understand the violent behavior and continual flow of threats from Iran's leaders apart from understanding Shiite beliefs regarding the Twelfth Imam. Iran's foreign policy only makes sense if the eschatology of the Twelvers, as they are called, is factored into the equation. But there is a surprising twist in the story. The eschatology of the Twelvers is experiencing diminished support from the general population. A secret that is becoming public knowledge is the fact that there is great division in the population of Iran. More and more Iranians are realizing that before the Islamic Revolution, Iranians were quite normal. Iran had a lot of happy people. اسیر رویا ها میشم دوباره باز تنها میشم به شب میگم پیشم بمونه به باد میگم تا صبح بخونه بخونه از دیار یاری چرا میری تنها میذاری اگه فراموشم کنی ترک آهوشم کنی but now, the harsh treatment and clubbing of women who are defying the mandate to wear the prescribed head covering, the rampant drug abuse and high rate of suicide are all signs that the Shiite Republic is crumbling from within. Thousands of mosques have already closed. Added to that is the fact that the Iranian church is the fastest growing church in the world. Government persecution has only increased the rate of the church's growth. Some have even said Iran is experiencing a Christian revival. Not many people are talking about this, but there's a massive revival going on in the Middle East right now. At the end of the day, natural human instinct is to gravitate away towards evil if it's making its presence too prevalent in our life, which is exactly what's happening to the Iranian citizens with Islam. The opposite of evil is love, and Jesus Christ is the epitome of love. And so as the Iranian citizens are gravitating away towards the evil demonic things that Islam teaches, they're starting to realize that the exact opposite of that is Christianity. This is just the beginning of the massive revival that's going to sweep over the entire Middle East. Muhammad is a false prophet, and Islam is a religion that will lead you to hell. God is plucking his people out of the damnation that this religion is creating, and he's bringing them to his kingdom through his son, Jesus Christ. I'm very thankful. We all remember, with great pain, that at the International Al-Quds Day Rally in Dearborn, Michigan, USA, protesters chanted death to America, but many are singing a different song in Iran. Is it realistic that the regime could be overthrown? Absolutely, no doubt about that. Because you cannot force the people to live in past 43 years and they cannot have any freedom of speech, freedom of work. It doesn't exist. 
Pastor Nazanin Bahistani told CBN's George Thomas how some Iranians are turning away from Islam in the midst of this crisis. They are so fed up of Islam and they see everything from Islam's point of view because the government, the leaders saying that because of Islam, you have to endure. And they say, we don't want to endure this um, uh, religion. So many, many are calling us and wanting a new God, wanting to look up to Jesus. Christians are persecuted in Iran, but Pastor Nazanin says that where there is more persecution, the people are more courageous, and they continue to spread the message of Jesus Christ. In Iran, one of the central features of the Shiite faith is the large number of mosques scattered throughout the country. The mosque is a place where Iranians can gather to pray, to gather together to hear inspiring messages. The presence of the mosque in so many places reminds the general population that the 12th Imam will soon make his appearance. However, mosques are closing by the thousands. As a matter of fact, not only are Iranians turning to Jesus, but that is a phenomenon occurring throughout the Muslim world. Some are even experiencing dreams and visions that are pointing them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, when I went to Mecca, I was going there in order to pay homage to the Kaaba and to fulfill the requirements in Islam. But that night, I saw Jesus in a dream. First, Jesus touched my forehead with his finger. And after touching me, he said, you belong to me. And then he touched me above my heart. You have been saved. Follow me. You belong to me, he said. So I decided, okay, I am not going to finish the Hajj, the pilgrimage. Whatever it takes, I am going to follow that voice. In the church, if you ask how many people, how people came to Christ, 80% will say they saw him in a dream. So I decided to, to ask him, and so I did. And then um, the next day, I guess, I saw a dream, and I saw in my dream, I saw Jesus was a bridge, I decided to come to him. As I look back over the many headlines from the end time segments, I will admit that most of the segments are negative and show a growing crisis coming upon the world. But what we have been reporting in this segment is really good news. This young Iranian woman's testimony will thrill your heart and drive you to pray that something similar would happen in America. I was standing in front of their, um, like the head of that detention center and he said, um, what is your faith? If you say you're Muslim, you can go out this door right now. If you say you're Christian, you're going to be tortured, you're going to be raped, and you're going to die. I opened my mouth and I said, I'm a Christian. And that guy was shocked that I said that. And he said, tell me your testimony. That's going to be your against you for your case. It, it, because in Iran, being a Christian carries the death penalty or long-term imprisonment. So I shared my testimony, and this man at the end of that whole ordeal ended up crying and asking for the Bible. Fifty years ago, to be a Christian in Iran meant you were part of a small ethnic group of Armenians, Chaldeans, or Assyrians, mostly consisting of the elderly. Today, the scene is very different. Young Iranian men and women, some with good jobs and in positions requiring technological skills, are now praising the Lord. 